In the previous tutorial, we learned that the make migrations command in Django is responsible for creating migration files based on changes detected in your Django models. We learned that when you run make migrations, Django performs a number of tasks, analyzing our code and models and the current state of a database to generate a set of migration files. Now I can think of at least several reasons for utilizing the Django make migrations command, but not need the migration files that have been generated from running this command. So for the occasions where we don't need the migration files, we have the dry run options. Simply put, with the dry run option, you can see the changes that would be made to the database schema without making those changes permanent or creating the migration file in this case. So this helps you understand the impact of the migrations and whether they align with your expectations. Now, ultimately, the difference between running make migrations and running make migrations with dry run is that make migrations without using dry run would provide the same information, but in addition to that, actually create the migration file. However, once we get past that surface level, in actual fact, there are a few occasions, a few instances when you might consider utilizing dry run. So first up is testing potential impact. Now, before applying migrations to your database, especially in production environments, you can use the dry run to see what changes would be made. This seems like a good idea, which will help you identify maybe any potential issues like data loss or compatibility problems before they occur. Let's remember that from the previous tutorial, we learned that make migrations is much more than just creating a file with changes to then migrate to the database. When we run the make migrations command, it's going to analyze the changes in our models. It's going to provide us any feedback on any errors that we might have. On this point, using dry run, really once your application scales and you've got a quite a large system, that's when it really becomes much more valuable in terms of testing potential impact. And of course, help identify any potential issues. There is a potential for utilizing dry run within our continuous integration pipelines. So in integrated workflows, dry run can be part of your testing process to ensure new code doesn't introduce any unexpected database changes. And then that leads into debugging migration issues. Now, this example that we've been utilizing so far, it just has one app. But imagine a Django application that has 10 or 12 or 16 apps within the same Django project. Let's just make the assumption that we want to run make migrations for all the 16 apps. We may have made uh, changes to multiple apps. Now, this is all hypothetical, of course. Now, of course, what's going to happen here if we make migrations with these 16 apps that we have within our Django application? It means that it's going to provide us a whole bunch of information here on screen related to all those apps, and there could be multiple problems. Now, in addition to that, what's also happened, of course, using make migrations is that a file is created for all of those apps that have changed. So if we want to roll back, then that could potentially just be a hassle. So using dry run in this instance means that we're not creating those files. So we can simply just inspect and debug potentially the applications at scale. Or then, of course, we could drill down to the individual applications because we can use dry run. Uh, for individual apps, of course. Maybe I'm trying to uh, shoehorn that into a scenario, but hopefully that's given you an introduction to dry run and given you something to think about potentially within your workflow, utilizing dry run at certain instances where you just simply want to maybe just check or utilize it as part of your testing process. Before we move to the next tutorial, I've updated the workflow, our Django migration workflow. So once the models have been changed, I've now added as the first step or first stage, a potential step of make migrations dry run, which can be performed on the whole Django application on all the apps or individual apps. Once we have tested the potential impact, we can go ahead and make migrations, make the migration file, and then we can go ahead and potentially review the migration by utilizing the SQ migrate command, which we learned in a previous tutorial. The SQL migrate command 
provided us a method of inspecting the SQL, which would be generated from the migration file. We could therefore, with this command, review the exact SQL statements that will be generated or executed before making any permanent changes to our database. Hopefully that's given you some perspective and consideration for utilizing Dry Run.